welcome to our third art tutorial. This should help you with your chapter four and five project. As requested, I did add in some questions that we need to answer with our code, um, not just to teach you uh, the code that you need to use. Um, you'll notice that this file is a little bit different. This is a .rmd file. This means it's an R markdown file. Um, you can do your classic like R uh, script file, like our, our notebook that we've done before. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> your classic R file to do all your coding. Um, but these .rmd files, what's kind of neat, and you can play around with them, I did give it to you in our Canvas course, is if I hit this knit button, what it'll do is it'll make it into a PDF document. So look, Here's this lovely PDF document I made that's got actual text in it. That's this white part here. And then it's also got, oh, there we go. It also has the code for R and what was printed out for this whole thing. So I give you this as well. Um, you do not have to do your homework as um, an R markdown file um, in your projects, but you totally could. Um, so feel free to play around and have some fun with it. Let me know if you have any questions. So this first tutorial, this third tutorial, like I said, is to help us get um, started in our chapter four and five project. So first, I want you to know that there are many data sets in R. You can go look at them if you want, right? There's like more, um, new window. There's more um, than just Iris or MT cars. Here's a whole list. Um, here's some about beavers. Um, so you could, in chicken weights, you know, so you could go ahead and like look through them and see if uh, there's something more interesting to you than uh, irises, but I like flowers. Ooh, more plant growth. Interesting. Maybe next time. I like flowers, so we're going to stick with the iris data set. So the first thing you need to do is always is load your data sets into R. Then that'll give us our iris data set, right? So str, that tells us our structure. Head, that prints the first few lot rows, right? You can see it shows us what would print. Um, but if you have a question, remember, you can always put a question mark in front of a data set or a function in R. And that question mark will tell you more about it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a histogram of the sepal length variable. That's our first problem. So if I didn't know about histograms, I could do question mark hist, and over here it would tell me some information. So it tells me the different stuff I can let in, right? So I have frequency, right? It makes a frequency histogram. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's just do, before I add in a bunch of stuff, histogram, of iris, remember our tab completes our friend, only if you type iris correctly, sepal length, right? So here's my histogram, right? Pretty nice. But I could add in a title, I could add in um, uh, and a label for my x-axis, right? Um, I could also change its color. I found this new thing called heat colors. I mentioned it in project two. Um, it makes everything look really cool. Look how cool that is. It changes color. Um, another thing I wanted you to notice is it counts the frequency, but if I didn't want this to be a frequency distribution, if I wanted it to say be a density distribution, where instead of being given the frequency, I'm given like um, the percentage that it occurs, right? I'm converting this um, to say a probability or a percentage, right? What I can do is I can type frequency equals false, right? False meaning, no, I don't want you to be a frequency histogram. I want it to be a density histogram. And see that changes it from frequency to density. So problem one, make a histogram. I did that. You know, now that you know how to add in labels, add in some labels, change your color to something fun, um, make it describe, make it the way you want to. So next, how would you describe this distribution? I would say it's somewhat normal. Maybe it's skewed a little bit to the right. It does feel a little heavier over here. 
So I put somewhat normal. On your homework, you might have multiple answers. Can you explain why it would be normal? Well, yeah, this is data that occurs naturally. So I would expect, I would expect that it would fit um, a normal distribution. For problem two, I want to make a scatter plot with a fit line, so a line of best fit, between sebal length and petal length. And I want to use, uh, I can't type. I want to use different markers for the different flower types. Um, and I can do that using this plot option, like it unclasses. And I want to see what is the correlation between subject, between length, sepal length, and petal width. So I'm going to do a plot, right? If I had questions about plot, I could type question mark plot, and it would tell me about it. Here's our default scatter plot function. That's what we're using. You give it an X and a Y, um, and you can unclass it, right? So that our iris and our species um, are plotted. So let's go ahead and do that. I need another prince to go. Did it work? Oh, look. Okay. So here are our petal lengths. Um, and what it did was it broke it up and gave a different symbol for each of the three species, um, which are Certosa, Virginica, and something else that's in the middle. Um, Versicolor, I think is what it is. But here it is. Um, what I tried to do, and you don't have to do this, not only did I add names, right, I added, uh, not names, I added my x-axis and my y-axis, I gave it a title, let's make, can I make this smaller, oh snap, okay, um, what I did was I added a legend, um, I just googled how to do this, so I just figured out how to do this. And it's not great. Uh, oh, I've got to run the whole thing. It's not great because I couldn't figure out how to put like the actual symbol, but I could tell that the circle was the Setosa, triangle was Versicolor, and the plus sign was uh, Virginica. So you can kind of see the distribution of each of those shapes individually. Um, to add a best fit line, we're going to make a linear model, LM, of the sepal length and the petal length. And I want that to be cyan, so I can run that. Mm, that didn't work. I think I have to run it all at once. Okay, and there's my best fit line in cyan. We could probably see that if we were to say make it different, if we were to just look at each um, type of iris individually. This one would have a steeper best fit line, so would this one, so would this one, right? Like they'd have kind of different correlations, but I can calculate the correlation. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm finding the correlation, COR, for our explanatory variable and our response variable, so X and Y. And then use complete OBS. I always include this just in case, because what it does is it leaves out NAs, so like any spot where the value, um, the data value is not in there. Like let's say, oh, for one of the flowers, I forgot to measure its petal width, so it doesn't have it, like it'll leave that out. So I got a correlation of 0.8717. So that's like a strong positive correlation as we kind of saw from our plot, right? Yeah. Next, what is the correlation between sepal length and sepal width and also petal width, right? So we found the correlation for sepal length and petal length, um, but let's look at the correlation for sepal length uh, and sepal width and petal width. So let's run this code. All right. So we can see that there's not much correlation for sepal length and sepal width. If I wanted to kind of visualize that, I could plot it. Do I want to do that right now? Do I feel like doing that? Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to plot uh, sepal width 
tilde C iris sepal length. All right, let's take a look at that. So we can see that kind of looks like it's going downhill a little bit, so it would have that negative correlation uh, that we found, right? And we found our positive correlation, right, for uh, sepal length and petal width. Next, let's define a new variable, which is the log of sepal width, and see that it, see if that improves uh, the scatter plot and correlation. Okay, so we have our plot, we have our correlation. That's a negative 0.10. Um, so let's take a look at what sepal width is to begin with, right? We've got all these nice numbers between like two and five, maybe. And I'm telling you to take the log. Well, what is the log? So log computes logarithms. By default, it's the natural logarithm. Oh, okay. So if I wanted to do log base 10, um, which is what we think of when we think of like, this is typically just log. Like if you're looking at the log in your calculator, um, it's log base 10. If we want the natural log, that's ln. So I asked us to take the log, so for that I meant log base 10. So what I do is I'm creating a variable called sepal width log base 10. And what I'm doing is I'm taking log base 10 of that data value. And this arrow means I'm storing it in my data set now. I'm adding it to my structure. So now, if I run that one line, if I've added it to my structure, and my data set and I type in okay so what is the structure of iris we should see oh yeah it's got sw log so that's the natural log and log base 10 programmed in I guess it ran this whole whole thing so now that I've run the whole thing let's go ahead and plot our sepal length and sepal width so that's what it was originally with a little bit of a downward slope now if I plot sepal length with sepal width base 10, my graph, what is that? Is that positive slope? Is that negative slope? Let's run the regression. So we see, oh yeah, it's still negative. It's slightly less negative. Well, what if I wanted to plot um, sepal length um, with my just natural log? it looks pretty much the exact same, so not very exciting. And we can see, oh yeah, it still has like a very weak negative correlation. The correlation did change a little bit. It did get a little bit weaker by taking the log or natural log, um, but it didn't change our function drastically, or our outcome drastically. So here's some, a rundown of all the R commands you should need for project four and five. If you have any questions, please comment.